Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today we're taking apart the Wii Array. Designed by Simon Craft. This is, uh, whenever you watch the full review, it's I spout happy things about it constantly because, well, it's just freaking beautiful. And we're torque screwed all around. We'll get a look at the quality of the torque screws, and there you go. Very little wobble and very tight. Now, we is doing their own torque screws. They're making them themselves. So, the depths of each different torque screw, of the recess and uh, the length of the torque screw, etc., etc., are all controlled by we for the specific knife. Now, let's get this guy apart. So, we have a standard we pivot with a torque screw in it so that comes apart plenty easy enough and two body screws way down here Let's see it wow i think the body screws had a little bit of loctite nothing crazy just a little bit yep just a little bit of loctite on there and that's good to see because whenever they were using the star screws they didn't always put Loctite, or very much if they did. They were really dainty with it, you could say. And that's okay, but it's always good to see them using what I would call correct amounts of Loctite. And there we go, came right off. Collar's still on there. Hardened steel washer still back in there. And there is our uh, lock bar insert and our little ceramic ball bearing. I am not going to take that off because sometimes these are super awful to try to get back in because they fit extremely tight on these wee knives. And that is, that one is a T6. Let's see how good a screw they put in that. Find our T6 driver. Oh my goodness, look at this. That's what you call a perfect T6. It's a little bit shallow because of where they had to put it, but wow. And also on the inside of the knife, it says Array, designed by Simon Crafts. We know this Simon Crafts guy. He, he makes some neat stuff. We have our bearings, of course. There's our blade. Something to note about this knife is our blade stop is right here in the knife. There you go. It rides in this titanium track around the knife, around the handle scales, and there are gonna be some people that aren't terribly happy about that, and I understand your concern. However, I've been using another Simon Craft design fairly regularly over the past several months, the uh, Slipstream. And the Slipstream has the same setup inside it and I haven't had a single problem with it. Lockup has stayed extremely solid, and this is one knife that gets flipped constantly by me or whoever might be around me that wants to look at it because of the way it flips. People just constantly flip it open and close. So it's had millions or hundreds of thousands probably of flips in it and no issues. So let's get a look at this side, all, and we'll get the other side up here too. They have milled out everything they can, and that leads even down the lock bar. That's impressive, and that leads to that weight of 3.36 ounces. For a knife with a 3.66 inch blade, uh, just impressive for the weight to this knife. And we've got a full, thick titanium backspacer that we're not going to pull out because I would prefer that those little sleeves stay right where they're at uh, and it's not necessary to clean the knife up some so here we go we're gonna just gonna wipe it out uh, I don't see any major ick down in there at all and we'll wipe off the bearings we're not gonna pop the well we'll pop them out just so you can see them uh, they're generally pretty hard to get out. You get, they fit in there fairly tight and then you get that just a little bit of oil on them and they don't want to come out. 
there you go. Wipe that out. Pop the other little guy out of there, maybe. Yep, came out. Not really anything on that one. It was pretty dry. That's good. And get a look at this blade. That's 3.66 inches. I know it looks smaller, but that's because it's only about three quarters of an inch high. And that gives it kind of a wedge like profile, but it's a pretty thin wedge. And uh, I've used this knife for, I don't know, two, three weeks. And yeah, this one. I've got, uh, I've got two different colors here. We've got that color and we've got this color and this one has the black blade. And I've been really impressed with the cutting performance of the knife. It's done really, really well for me. Uh, we'll get a little bit of acetone so you guys can fuss at me. I know, I know, I should get some alcohol down here. Put my big sprayer of alcohol is up in the shop. And I don't have any plastic parts to worry about. That is, as people will note in the comments, that uh, you shouldn't be using acetone on plastic parts. And on the Wii knives, it's fairly safe except for the finish. And I've never tried on one of Wii knives blade finishes, but I did get some acetone on a Spyderco black blade finish one time. <clears throat> and it made it, it went from being very, very black to being dark gray. And, uh... Never doing that again, because, well, I would like the knives to keep their original finish. But uh, there we go, we're all cleaned up, and you guys know the deal now. We gotta go to the Vibratite, and many of you have mentioned the Vibratite, asked about it a little bit, so I'll talk about it real quickly again. Vibratite, now I don't have a regular bottle of Vibratite, you'll have to look it up on the web, but Vibratite is kind of a gummy substance that uh, goes in place of a standard thread locker. And what it does is it makes kind of a gooey stuff down in between your threads. And you're saying, well, I don't know if I want that. Well, what Loctite does your standard blue Loctite that most people use, and hell, I use it too. Uh, but what Loctite does, see, it's very gummy and stringy, and I've got something on the end of that. Should be using that black mat for these teardowns. What Loctite does is it works more like super glue. And whenever you take the air away from Loctite, it dries up, essentially into a hard kind of chalky substance and works just like I said like super glue and holds your stuff in place which works great in many applications now what we're doing here is we're trying to put together a knife that you flip open its general opening mechanism is to be flipped open uh, this one you can pinch it open but in general you would flip it open and that puts a lot of shock across the entire knife. And that shock is exactly the way that Spyderco tells you to break Loctite. They tell you to take your driver, put it down in there, and tap the back of the driver with a hammer or something to shock the Loctite to break it. And they're talking about red Loctite, but you can do the same with blue Loctite. And sometimes it works really, really well. Well, this stuff being gummy, what it does is absorb the shock. It's kind of like a shock absorber for your screw. It's a bit sticky, so it holds things in place. And it's a bit gummy, so that whenever everything does this little bit of shock, whenever you open it, it goes, eek, and right back to where it was. Does it work every time? Well, no. But... It works more consistently than blue Loctite in an application like this. And if you do buy yourself some, it's Loctite, or it's uh, Vibratite VC3 that I have. And uh, whenever you order it, just go ahead and order yourself some uh, of these. These are uh, little bottles for nail polish. And you can get the empty ones on eBay or Amazon. They don't cost but a buck or so a piece. 
and they are well worth spending your money on because the bottle that the Vibrotite comes in is pretty crappy. So that's what I do. I always get this. In fact, this bottle, and I discovered this because Susie Nails It saved me because I broke the Vibrotite bottle trying to get it open. Doesn't happen with these bottles. Much better. Anyhow, 30 minutes, and we'll be back for you instantly to put this thing back together. Well, here we go. Our 30 minutes is up, and off we go to put it back together. I've already put the pivot back in, and we need a backing washer. Uh, if you're doing this in a knife that's been used, always look for that little crack on the washer. This one almost has one, but not really, so we're still going to put that one up. And we're going to put a little bit of nano oil. Uh, I'm using the tin weight on this one, on this bearing before we put it down in there because we're putting the open side of the bearing in to the handle scale like this. That's how we have started to do them the way that I suggest. I doubt I had any bearing on that, but they are doing it. and lay our knife blade down in here. No stop pin because the stop pin is right there. And put our bearing on here with the back sticking out so it'll go into or the open side sticking out so it'll go into the handle slab and put our washer over the top of it and see if this thing snaps right together. Oh, we almost forgot something. We've got our thick nano oil, 85 weight. And we just want to put a little dab right there on that detent hole so that ball can pick it up as it goes around or as it drops off down into the hole. And there we go. Now, I do see some ick down in there that I'm going to try to scrape out. Got a little bitty Firmu, believe it or not, screwdriver. Firmu is pretty cool. They send these little screwdrivers with all your glasses so you can make adjustments without having to hunt for one. Well, you might have to hunt for the one they sent you. <coughs> but they at least sent it for you. And they make good little screwdrivers to get the ick out of these. <laughs> All right, I think we're in good shape now. So, put our collar back in. Put our pivot screw back in now that the Vibratite is cured. Make sure you have a T8 in there. And those screws are so tight, they're titanium, so no magnets there. That's just how tight the heads on those screws are. You can stick them on the end of your Torx bit. And if you got a good Torx bit, they'll stay right where you put them, so you can stick them in the hole and not have to fight with it. Very, very nice. All right, so there we go. We're all back together. And let's see how it works may have it just a bit tight but it's it's centered up right now and I'm gonna guess that if I loosen it just a hair it'll stay centered yep there you go that is what's inside the we and Simon crafts or NS Edgeworks array it is a beauty. Be sure to watch the full video of it. Should be following this one very closely. And you guys have a great day. Hope you found this interesting. And I'll see you next time.